This is Sylvia Saber with OPTV Global Headlines. Starting with the top international stories for the day. Western allies lack consensus on banning Russia's energy over Ukraine war. White House said that no decision has been made at this point by U.S. President Biden on implementing a unilateral ban on Russia energy supply. Pakistan is ready to play a facilitating role for de-escalation in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Prime Minister Imran Khan shared concern over continued military conflict with European Council President in a telephonic conversation. Russia has become the world's most sanctioned country due to Ukraine war. Russia has been slapped with 5,532 sanctions, most of them by Switzerland. A Russian general has been killed in the fighting around the Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv, the Ukrainian military intelligence agency said. Russia has not commented yet. Israel has fired several missiles toward Syrian regime's military positions near Damascus, killing two civilians. It was the first Israeli attack inside Syria since Russia. United Nations report revealed that nearly 400 civilians have been killed in attacks in Afghanistan since the Taliban takeover, more than 80% of them by a group affiliated to the Islamic State. Australia issues flood warnings across east as torrential rains hit Sydney, minor to major flooding occurring from Queensland to Victoria provinces. One teenager died and another two were wounded outside their high school in the U.S. state of Iowa. Police said that the gunfire appears to have come from a passing vehicle. Up next, we have the national updates. Chief of the Army Staff General Kamar Javed Bajwa met Prime Minister Imran Khan. They reviewed the security situation and regional stability. The Economic Coordination Committee has approved the Kamyab Overseas Program. The program will extend a loan facility of 300,000 rupees to the Pakistanis serving abroad. The death toll from the Peshawar suicide bombing has reached 63. Aki Hussain Bangash, a resident of Parajanar in the Kuram Tribal District. Pakistan is sending a chartered Pakistan international airplane to Poland to repatriate stranded students in Warsaw. Flight will bring around 300 Pakistanis home. International Women's Day is being celebrated across the world, including Pakistan. The day is to raise awareness against gender discrimination and to acknowledge the outstanding contributions by women in different fields. Pakistan has seen a growing presence of women in the civil services and armed forces during the past decade. Statistics show the number of women in the federal and the provincial bureaucracy has increased 20%. Top leadership of opposition, including Shehbaz Sharif, Asif Ali Zardari and Malana Fazlur Rahman, have reached a consensus on no-confidence motion against Prime Minister Imran Khan. Opposition leader of Senate Gilani said that legal experts are doing their job. PPP Chairman Balawal Bhutto Zardari led Awami March is to arrive at Islamabad's at D Chowk in the evening. Balawal Bhutto Zardari has given a 24-hour ultimatum to PM Imran Khan to resign. Former Senior Minister Punjab Alim Khan has joined Jahangir Tareen's PTI faction. Alim Khan said like-minded group to save PTI. Veterinary experts in Punjab have prepared a vaccine with successful results against lumpy skin disease in livestock. Official claims zero cases in Punjab, while Sindh government has decided to shut down cattle markets across the province due to the emergence of the lumpy skin disease. Full justice under law. We haven't yet lived up to that promise marginalized communities across our nation. I'm Fasil Gill. I saw how the color of your skin so I went to law school because I wanted to fight to make the law work for all. Because I wanted to give back. Because black lives matter. Because we need to incarcerate less and educate more. Deserves justice. Up next we have the health updates. Scientists have pinpointed 16 new genetic variants in severe COVID-19 patients. Scientists suggest that these patients have genes that predispose failure to limit the ability of the virus to make copies of itself or excessive inflammation and blood clotting. Up next, we have the updates on science and technology. A study warned that Amazon rainforest is moving towards a tipping point, where trees may die off en masse. It reveals that parts of the Amazon are now emitting more carbon dioxide than can be absorbed. Up next, we have the sports updates. 
Pakistan's former hockey goalkeeper Imran Butt appealed to Prime Minister Imran Khan about saving the national game and players, but asked Prime Minister to revisit the government's decision to close sports departments. A hat-trick of gold medals propelled Canada from 6th through 3rd in the Beijing Winter Paralympics medal stable. Top of the table, China's medal haul is now up to 25. Up next, we have the entertainment updates. Bollywood actor Nasiruddin Shah has surprised Pakistani fans with live appearance at Karachi Literature Festival. Huge crowd gathered to hear his talk about his journey from mainstream to parallel cinema. Bollywood sensation Alia Bhatt has confirmed Hollywood debut with Gal Gadot, Jamie Dornan. Alia is working on a spy thriller titled Heart of Stone for Netflix. Sarva Khusid's social drama Zindagi Tamasha is finally set for a cinematic release in Pakistan. The film took the Snow Leopard Award for Best Film at the Asian World Film Festival earlier this year. Famed Pakistani vocalist Atif Aslam forgot the lyrics to his song Kuch Is Tara during a concert. The singer forgot lyrics after getting distracted by emotional fan crying in the crowd. Up next, we have the business updates. The United Nations and the United States have demanded an end to the blockade on two of Libya's key oil fields. The demand comes as prices soared to over $130 a barrel. The assistant U.S. Trade Representative for South and Central Asia said that United States will be evaluating Pakistan's response to the situation in Ukraine. Top officials said lack of predictability in government policies impacting investment climate. justice under law. We haven't yet lived up to that promise marginalized communities across our nation. I'm Fasil Gill. I saw how the color of your skin. So I went to law school because I wanted to fight to make the law work for all. Because I wanted to give back. Because black lives matter. Because we need to incarcerate less and educate more. Deserves justice.